Hello, I'm Zakira and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to show you guys how you can make your very own DIY desk calendar. The new year is just around the corner and this calendar is super cute and fun to make and makes a great gift too. I'll be showing three different methods to create your desk calendar base from a super, super easy and quick method using a recycled box to a more difficult but a very mucho professional <laughs> looking method uh, that I use personally for the desk calendars that I sell on my shop. This tutorial will be following closely to a printable pattern pack I created, uh, which you can get on zakira.com slash shop. In that pattern pack, everything is already measured out, so it's a lot easier to make if you have these patterns. You just kind of print it out and start cutting and stuff. But I do want this tutorial and project to be accessible and possible for anyone to create with or without my patterns, so I will be disclosing all of the measurements and tools, etc, etc. So just by following along with this video, you should have all of the information you need to get on with the creating your own cute little desk calendar. So so without further ado, let's get into it. Tools and materials. So the materials you'll need for your calendar pages is just some printing paper to print out your calendar sheets on. I'm using double-sided matte premium presentation paper. Very fancy, I know. <laughs> but you can use just regular old printer paper if you don't have access to this more special paper. I've done prototype calendars using regular copy paper and it honestly looks pretty good. So if you don't have anything else, then just stick to regular printer paper. You will also need access to a printer. Surprise, surprise. If you do not have a printer at home, then you still can make your own calendar. However, you will need to hand draw each and every calendar page. It takes more time, but still very doable if you only need to make one. Next, you'll need the materials for your calendar base or stand, that little triangle thingy. Like I mentioned, I will be showing three different methods to make this base. And for the first and simplest method, all you'll need is a piece of corrugated car corrugated car 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 corrugated I can never say that word right <laughs> <laughs> You'll need a piece of cardboard. Any old cardboard box will do. If you want to do method two or three, then you will need some chipboard. You can recycle this off of an old cereal box. Don't worry if it has any ugly patterns on it because it will get completely covered up. You'll also need a large piece of cardstock or patterned paper in your favorite color and some glue. I recommend this specific glue stick. It's an Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength glue stick. I also tried this Elmer's Craft Bond quick dry glue that comes in liquid form. Um, but whatever glue that you use, just make sure that it's a permanent bond kind that is for paper and not one of those washable school glues. And finally, for binding the calendar together, you will need some double wire coils. These are a bit difficult to get if you want to purchase them brand new, but I highly recommend just recycling these off of an old notebook or sketchbook. Chances are you have one lying around somewhere, and I will show you guys how to remove and reuse the coil uh, later in this video. As for tools, you will need some scissors and or a straight cutter thingy like this if you have one, a pen or pencil for marking stuff, a ruler for measuring stuff, and a hole punch. I use a specialized tool called a cinch press. It just makes the hole punching process faster and easier, but I did make sure for this video to make a whole calendar using nothing but a single hole hole punch, and it was surprisingly very easy to do. So you can just pick up one of these at your local dollar store or office supply store if you don't have one already, and you should be good to go. I'll have the full list of materials and tools listed down in the description box, including all of the specific ones that I'm using in this video. So let's make this calendar, shall we? Design. So the first thing you're going to need before you start printing or crafting or anything like that is the actual calendar design itself. I designed mine from scratch, but if you're not into that, there are many places online where you can get digital download calendars or templates, some paid, some completely for free, uh, which you can then print out at home. Just search like printable 2021 calendar or something. 
If you like the calendar that I designed here, uh, it is included in the printable digital download pattern that I mentioned earlier. It includes all of the pages and cutting patterns and it's all formatted into PDFs and ready to print so you can skip all of this uh, computer mumbo jumbo. Uh, speaking of which, I get asked this a lot. The digital software that I use for illustration, design, printing, pretty much everything is Clip Studio Paint EX. I have been using Clip Studio Paint since like 2015 and I haven't really had the need to use anything else most of the time uh, when it comes to art. I even print directly out of this software now. If you watch any of my videos with like digital art processes, that is the software you're seeing me draw in. I'm not sponsored by Clip Studio Paint, but I mean, maybe I should be at this point. <laughs> Clip Studio, what up? Anyway, if you want to design your own calendar pages like I did, here's what you need to know. The size that I'm making the calendar pages is 4.25 inches by 5.5 inches. It's a pretty small calendar. And whether or not you're designing your calendar yourself or you're using one you found online, one main thing you'll want to make sure of before printing it out is to format your calendar pages so that there is some clearance at the top of each page of about half an inch. This will provide the room needed to bind the calendar later on. So make sure there's no important artwork or text in that area. The calendar I'm making is a 12 month calendar. So I designed 12 pages as well as a cover cover page, a holiday page, and a little note from the artist page at the back of the calendar. I make these calendars as a product, which is why I have this little note from the artist page in the back, but if you're just making this for yourself, then you can totally skip that page. Once you have all of your pages, the next step is to line it up for printing. So a big reason why I made the calendar pages 4.25 by 5.5 inches is so that, if you do the math, four calendar pages will fit onto one letter size sheet of paper for printing. If you don't know, a letter size sheet of paper is 8.5 inches by 11 inches. So you're going to want to arrange your pages like so, making sure that the tops of your calendar pages are on the outside, lined up with the edges of the sheet of paper. And now this is where things might get a little complicated. Um, that is if you do want to print your calendar exactly the way I do, because I print these pages to be double-sided. So February is printed on the back side of January, April is printed on the back side of March, so on and so forth. Doing this saves on paper and makes the finished calendar less bulky, but it can be a little confusing because double-sided printing at home is confusing. And unfortunately, I can't really walk you guys through how to do it because double-sided printing will depend heavily on your specific printer and your software which you're printing from. Whether or not your printer is a back loader or a tray loader, whether or not your software likes to turn your designs clockwise or counterclockwise when it prints. I had to figure it out, but if I'm being honest, it really wasn't that difficult. Uh, so just do a couple of sheets, trial and error, you'll figure it out believe me. But if you don't want to deal with it, uh, then just print your pages single-sided. You'll have twice as many pages, but if you're using a thinner paper, like regular copy paper, then it will be just fine. Once you have all of your sheets printed, you just need to cut them out and you're ready to go. the base. The next step is to create the base or the stand for the calendar. I'm going to be showing you guys three different methods from easiest to hardest. So for method one, 
All you're going to need is a piece of corrugated, if I'm saying that right, <laughs> cardboard that is at least 11 inches by five and a half inches. And you're going to want to make sure that the ridges in the cardboard are perpendicular to the length, like so. The first step is to cut the cardboard down to the correct size. I'm using my printable pattern for this. Again, the measurement is 11 inches long and five and a half inches wide. Next, you're going to want to mark a line that is four and a third inch from one of the ends and do the same on the other end. Then you're going to want to look closely at your cardboard and find the closest indented ridges to your marked lines. In my case, my lines are actually like right on ridges, so that works out really well. And just gently fold along it. The pre-made ridges in the cardboard should make it super, super easy to fold. And that is it. I also like to add a third fold in the very middle so that the calendar can fold up and your base is done. Super duper easy. This is the method that you can like get your kids involved in if you have them, um, because now that your base is pretty much finished, you can go ahead and decorate it, you can paint it, you can put stuff, glitter on it, whatever the heck you want to put on it, uh, so that it's not just plain cardboard. Method two. This second method is almost as profesh as the third method, but it's way easier. For this method, you're going to need some chipboard, and you'll also need a large 12 by 12 inch piece of cardstock or patterned paper in your favorite color. The first step is to cut down your chipboard. I'm using the exact same pattern as in the previous method. Then, just like in the previous method, you're going to fold the chipboard along the same lines as last time. For an a third inch from the edges and one fold in the middle. Then you're going to take your cardstock or paper and cut it in half. So now it's 12 inches by 6 inches. Then you're going to glue your chipboard base in the middle of your paper strip. Make sure it's really well glued and smoothed out. I like using a bone folder to help. Next, you're going to cut the corners off of the paper that's peeking out. And you're going to fold each side over and glue, effectively wrapping the paper around the chipboard. Then take your remaining strip of cardstock or paper and cut it down so it would cover all of the remaining exposed chipboard and glue on. Once again, make sure you really press down firmly and smooth out the paper and press into all of the fold marks so that there's no gaps or air or anything in there. Then let completely dry. Once it's dry, gently fold your base along the folds you made earlier. Doing this will put quite a bit of stress and pulling on the paper, so do not be surprised if it unglues itself in certain areas. If this happens, just add some more glue into the gaps and let dry again. Once the paper is used to the way it's supposed to bend, it won't unglue itself anymore. And that's it! It looks super clean and nice and you can make it any color pattern that you want. There are a couple of issues that I found with this method, however. Uh, mainly, the paper tends to rip slightly along the folds. The folds are simply too tight for the paper, so you start to see it fraying and ripping up. Also, because the folds are very tight, it doesn't like to stay folded flat, it will spring open. But, if I'm being honest, the rips are hardly noticeable, and, and unless you need to store your calendar flat, the fact that it springs open is no problem at all. So this is still a very great method if you're doing it for yourself or making it as a gift for someone. But, if you are the perfectionist, 
I don't know what the heck accent that was. <laughs> if you are a perfectionist like me, uh, then you can try method three. That rhymes. Method three. For this method, you will need the exact same materials as in method two, chipboard and cardstock or paper and your glue. However, rather than folding, we're going to be cutting. For this, I'm using my other printable pattern and I'm cutting out two pieces of chipboard that are four and a third inch by five and a half inch and two pieces that are one inch by five and a half inch. Then once again, you're going to cut your colored cardstock or paper in half. Then you're going to arrange your chipboard pieces on the paper like so, with the smaller pieces in the middle and the larger ones on the sides. And it's important to leave gaps in between each piece of chipboard of about a quarter of an inch and glue it down. Once it's all glued down, you're going to cut off the corners of the paper like before, fold over, and glue. Make sure that you press into the grooves as much as you can as you glue. Next, take your second strip of paper, cut down to size like before, and glue on top. While the glue is wet, it's super important to press the paper into each of the grooves. This is where using a bone folder will really, really come in handy. It's very difficult to do it with your fingers. And you're gonna wanna do this repeatedly on both sides of the base until it really feels like paper is touching paper and there is no air or space inside of the gaps. Then leave your base until it is completely dry. I really recommend waiting until it is like 100% dry before trying to bend it, um, but I always get impatient and I kind of end up regretting it because the less dry the glue is, the higher chance of it getting unglued when you try to bend it. Um, but once again, if it gets unglued in any part, just you know squeeze a little more glue into those gaps and press together and let it dry again. Once it is completely dry though, you should be able to bend the base gently along the grooves and it should not tear the paper because the gaps will create enough space for the paper to bend comfortably. Also, this method lays flat the best when it's all folded up, which is great for me because it makes it a lot easier to ship out to customers. And that is it for method three. So now that you have all of your calendar pages printed and cut, and you've created your base using one of the three methods shown, it's time for binding. Binding. For this, you're going to need your hole punch and some double wire coils. If you'd like to recycle these coils off of an old notebook or sketchbook, which I highly recommend you do, the first thing you're going to want to do is find a notebook with rings that are a half of an inch apart from each other. Technically, you can use any coils, whatever measurement they are, but for this specific tutorial and also in my printable patterns, I'm using half inch, so it will be easier to follow along if you also use half inch, otherwise known as a two to one pitch ratio. Two to one means two rings per one inch, AKA half an inch math, wonderful. It's one of the most common pitch ratios for double wire, so hopefully you guys can find some around your house. Once you have your old notebook, you're going to want to find where the coils meet, the ends if you will. It will probably be hidden between the last page and the back cover. Then using your fingers, you're going to gently pull the rings apart one by one like so. It should be fairly easy. Then just twist and remove from your notebook. In this case, I'm not even going to take off the whole thing. I'm just going to use some wire cutters to cut off as much as I need. For this calendar, you will need two sets of three rings, so six rings in total. Once you have your double wire, you're ready to get binding. So first you're going to need to punch the holes in all of your pages and in your calendar base. I'm using my template 
If you don't have this, I highly recommend you make your own template so that you can make sure all of your pages will have all of their holes evenly punched. To make a template, all you need to do is grab a piece of paper that is the same size as your calendar pages, then measure and mark a dot that is a quarter inch from the top of the page and a half of an inch from the side of the page. Then mark two more dots that are a half of an inch apart. This way, your holes will match the distance of your double wire rings. You'll want to mark three more holes exactly identical on the other edge of the template. Then punch out the holes and use the template as a guide to punch the holes in the rest of your pages. Ta-da! Punching the holes in your base will take a bit more elbow grease, um, but it's still very doable. Once all of your pages and base is punched, the last step is to assemble and bind. Line up all of your calendar pages in the correct order against the front of your base, whichever side of your base feels more like the front. Then slip your double wire rings from the back like so. Grab the back of your base and line it up then gently pinch your coils closed. You can use pliers if you want. My cinch press actually has a little presser thing to close them, but I honestly prefer to just use my fingers. And that is it. Your calendar is finito, it's finished, it's complete, it's gorgeous, congratulations. Congratulations. It's beautiful. As I already mentioned, if you like the calendar I made in this video and would like the printable digital download pattern, including all of the pages and everything, and it's much easier to make, um, it's available on my shop, zakir.com slash shop. If you would like to get a physical calendar fully assembled and signed by me, uh, then that is also available on my shop. In fact, a couple of the calendars you saw me make in this video, namely the ones that I made using method three for the base, were actually made for customers. They were made for pre-orders. So I'm packing them up and sending them out. By the time this video goes up, the pre-order period has just ended and the calendar is now officially launched and it is up on my shop and it will remain available until probably the end of the year. Definitely December, but most likely end of the year. I realize this tutorial is not the most super simplest DIY project out there. Yes, you have to punch a million holes and you have to print stuff and whatnot not, um, but I did try to find ways to make it simpler and more accessible to anyone who would like to give it a go. There is so much room for customization and recycling, and it's just really fun and it's really cute and I hope you guys will give it a try. It's a very useful project too, I mean everyone needs a calendar and it makes a great gift. And if you do make one, I would love to see it. Feel free to tag me on Twitter or Instagram, my handle is at Zakura underscore art. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed enjoyed this video and if you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Also hit that little bell so you stay notified on upcoming videos. And before you go, be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think. How do you like this calendar? Uh, do you think you'll give this project a go? Do you have any questions? Whatever, I always love hearing from you guys. If you'd like to subscribe to my newsletter or check out my shop, all that and more can be found on my website, zakira.com. Link is in the description box. Also, P.S. Go check me out on Instagram because I am currently undergoing a personal project I'm calling Pintober Zaki because Pintober is already taken <laughs> where I'm in the midst of designing and creating my very first enamel pin and I'm getting you guys my lovely community involved uh, with voting on your favorite design if you're not on Instagram then check out my YouTube community page 
because I need you guys to vote. Vote on your favorite pin design and the winner will get made into an actual factual enamel pin. Yes. Hopefully I'll have some videos coming up where I talk more in depth about it. But for now, go check out the community page. Go check me out on Instagram. And until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya.